We are legends. Welcome to We Are Legends, the unofficial podcast for DC Legends Mobile. I am Slow Beast, and with me as always is Hate Mail. In this episode, we discuss all the news, the rework characters, crazy team comps with Ogre Barbarian, but first, we need to get into a community hot topic, which is the changes to Deathstroke and Lobo. We talked about this in last episode, but we wanted to respond directly to some of the comments that were directed towards us. Uh, there's been some people saying that they think that we're just beating the drum for the company at this point and we're not really giving uh, our opinions. Uh, but if you go back and listen to any of our previous episodes, I think from the first episode on, we have been saying that we want some changes to Deathstroke. We feel like he's too powerful. And now that the company has actually finally responded, the devs have changed Deathstroke. And, and we both felt like it was a pretty good change. Deathstroke's still a viable character. Uh, we're not going to go back on that and say that we think that they shouldn't have changed him. So. All hail Deathstroke. I don't know. What's your feelings on this, Hate? Well, I know some people are upset because they think that Red Hood was made worthless after people shut out gems. And when we get into Swamp Thing, I can tell you that is not the case at all. Because Swamp Thing is probably going to be a new meta level character, in my opinion. And if you don't have Red Hood, he's going to, or Dr. Fate or some of the other anti revive characters, he's going to be a challenge. And Red Hood is a physical character that takes care of that problem. Secondly, I honestly think that with Deathstroke and Lobo the way they were, and I know we talked about this at length in the last episode, I think future PvE content, unless you restrict Deathstroke or have heal immunity on everything, it would have made such a pain for them to make content that's actually challenging. And a lot of people are also upset because they feel like it ruins free-to-play and they have no method of getting into the top 100 or getting into the high ranks. And yeah, top 100 probably is going to be pretty challenging if you don't have any gear level and characters. But I know Slow Beast, you're not true free to play, but you're mostly free to play. And World Bear in our alliance, he's free to play. And he was always able to achieve top 100 previously when it was a character he really wanted to push for, or regularly in top 1500. And he's been saving up gear. He didn't want to make the gear 11 jump, and I don't know if he's going to yet. I'm waiting to see how this pans out for him. And he, he abused the Baby Lobo methodology to easily achieve certain things. But even he thinks that this needed to be changed. So as a, a good free-to-play player, I think it's still possible. Is it going to be harder? Yeah. But when you're a free-to-play player and, or a new player, you a, any other game you play, getting into the top 100 in a game, there, there's tens of thousands of people, a couple hundred thousand people most likely, is not going to be an easy thing to do. Right now it's a super easy thing to do with that combo. Or before the nerf, anyway. Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't want to spend entirely too much time on this, but uh, I, I think you you pretty much nailed it. the The meta is changing, and I, and I feel like you know the shift is um, kind of unexpected, and people aren't sure where it's going to land. But this this was something that happened back with the arrows, and and then you know Supergirl, and something's going to shift. We'll we'll find the new you know gotta have characters that everyone's going to be using. But it's it may not be autopilot anymore. You're going to have to actually work and and pick your battles to try to stay in the top 100 and you may even have to make that change to gear 11 i don't know but i'll let you know as as we go if if it's something that is even doable for me in the future well and i know i there was a fanatic jalapeno posted in the regular forums that you know the, the, he called it the great divide and he feels like free to play is pretty much doomed at this point and i, I don't agree with that statement at all i think free to play it's going to be harder and the game definitely gave a crutch way too long. They, they should have done this much sooner. People would have been upset then when it first happened because the Gear 11 change. And honestly, I wasn't happy about the Gear 11 change because it, you know, it was a big shift when I was getting close to getting everybody to Gear 10. Um, but these types of things happen in progression-based games. It's just to be expected eventually. So I think it's going to be uncertain times. It's going to be a little difficult for a little while. But making that shift to Gear 11 for some characters may be something that you're going to need to do in the near future. Yeah. I'm actually really excited because, you know, it's not going to be the same old, same old, and we're going to start seeing some new team compositions and, and some of these new characters that we're getting ready to get into. Um, I'm really excited to see them in the, and how they work out in actual gameplay, but all right, let's go ahead and shift into that now. Breaking. 
So the new characters' powers were uh, announced. We actually have their abilities, so we can talk about them now. And uh, let's start with Martian Manhunter. Uh, what uh, what are you seeing in there that's really jumping out at you in his kit? Martian Manhunter seems really interesting. Um, he he does special damage. He grants awareness to random teammates. Um, he can call assist, which is nice. He's got all kinds of different awareness, debuff immunity abilities, turn meter up. I, <laughs> I have a feeling he's going to be one of those game-changing, super powerful characters, mainly because they did him with the Alliance rewards, and I think they're going to want us to... And he's been a character everybody sought after. Everybody's for a long time. wanted, yeah, absolutely. He's been demanded, so. Um, the nice thing is, is he's also going to be able to purge buffs. He can't miss. I mean, he seems like he does everything you could want a character to do. Um, he does intelligence up, so I think he's going to pair really well with Jessica Cruz, being an intelligence special damage based hero. And then um, he also gains awareness to all, all allies when an ally dies. So he's another one that's going to have another death mechanic, and I think this is where. If you had Deathstroke the way he was, I think he, he would have been so strong with all these characters that gained buffs from people dying and revivers. I think that's why Lobo had to change. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but now remember, too, one, one other quick thing we didn't mention earlier is that Lobo, uh, his AI, now taunts, which he did not before. So you have to kill him early. He'll cast it you know, usually at the start of the battle as soon as he gets his turn. Now you almost have to kill him three times. So Deathstroke or Jessica Cruz, whoever you're using, gets buffed all high heaven. And if you have somebody dying, and then you got Martian Manhunter spreading awareness everywhere, that could get this, that could get ugly quick. Absolutely. Yeah, he he seems really interesting. I, I'm glad that uh, he's finally coming out. He's finally here. And man, I just everything awareness. Like I wow. <laughs> I, I'm almost a little scared of PvP. <laughs> there right? are some long battles. I think I think we're we're destined for some long battles. I don't know how I, I feel. I think exactly PvP is going to slow way down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, and let's go down to John Constantine. Let's see. So, what really jumped out to you about him? Well, I like that he has the bleeds and he has enrage. So, the enrage characters and the bleed characters have a a double synergy. So you kind of have a couple different options for him. Um, I actually, I know um, Joker from the forums isn't going to be happy to hear this, but I really think he'll pair really well with Joker Clown Prince, and possibly mm. make him a lot more viable. Right. He he. The other big, and this is the biggest thing, is he can apply taunt to a character depending on his speed. I think. Hold on, let me look at his speed. I didn't even look at that earlier. So he's his not slow. His speed is he's 77. An average, yeah, he's not 77 plus 30 at right. gear 11. So he's. Yeah. He's not a super fast character, but he's not slow by any means either. So I'm not sure how that pairs with Poison Ivy. I did, forgot to look it up before this. Um, but he can apply taunt and call their assist. He says apply taunt to ally and call their assist. So that's pretty crazy. And then he also gains an awareness when he does it. So that's that sounds like it's going to be pretty pretty powerful. And well, if you're I mean, pairing him with... Did you see his, uh, his ability as team leader? He, he has the tough luck mate. Whenever an ally dies, Constantine gains invisibility, applies 4 intelligence down, 2 speed down, and minus 30% turn meter to the enemy team. And the legendary is grant 2 awareness and reset all of Constantine's cooldowns when an ally dies. That's crazy, because when you look at his apply the taunt, the legendary upgrade is 40% chance to call second assist, and if they're overhealed, there's another 40% chance. So it's an 80% chance to call assist twice. Yeah. That's yeah. crazy. So he's going to enable slow teams. You can, I mean, I'm just thinking a team with him as lead, Clayface, Swamp Thing. Yeah. I, I just that that's going to be tough to take down. He's another. He gives out awareness too. Um, yeah. No. This is this is definitely going to slow down PvP. And honestly, I'm going to want to use Lobo with that team because I want him to die three times. Sure. And keep putting buffs on him. So I. And then he's going to spread bleeds, and then Constantine's going to spread bleeds. So it's yep. there's there's a lot of possibilities with this. All right, and then we had uh, Etrogen, um, and looks like he's going to be he looks like a lot of fun. I actually really like him. I think he's going to be pretty cool. What uh, what jumped out to you about him? Well, he's another special damage character, which is pretty interesting. And then he does um, when you look at his basic, it does. 10% true damage if he's overhealed, which is pretty awesome. And then I guess he can use it twice. So we'll see how much damage that does. But 10% true damage is pretty significant. That will help a little bit with awareness stacking. Yeah. 
Well, and then the 70% to use it twice if he's overhealed. So he's going to pair very nicely with Swamp Thing. Yeah. And uh, uh, Enchantress. Yeah, Enchantress Swamp Thing teams. I think I think Enchantress is definitely, with a lot of these characters, I think we're going to see her suddenly start gaining a lot more popularity again. Um, his AoE ability does damage, special damage to all enemies. If And then he's got another one, if another enemy is dead type of thing. So mm -hmm. him and Jessica Cruz, if somebody is dead. Now, this isn't revived. This is if they're actually dead, which, which uh, sometimes I don't know how I feel about that because you almost want a character to die to get more out of them. Right. But it is useful when your characters do die, so that you're suddenly more powerful. And But then he's also got reduced cooldown by one for legendary upgrade after use for each living enemy. So I guess yeah, it's so, a bonus if you're alive or a bonus if they're dead. Well, yeah, exactly. So like, if you're not doing very well killing the enemy team, then uh, he gets to use more abilities. But if you're wiping him out quickly, then it kind of slows him down a little bit. Um, He's another one that can also gain one of his legendary upgrades. At the start of the battle, he gains credit immunity and a small overheal with his uh his shield he'll get intelligence and an over shield uh so there's that's pretty neat right at the start of the battle you can give him crit immunity so he's he's i have a feeling he's gonna be very tanky just based on his stamina that he has over 2,000 stamina and his hit points is not crazy high but it's still pretty high at 27,000 to 28,000 I, I like this um you gain one true sight and you got 35 percent turn meter if enemy revives 28 percent chance to use at start of etrogen's turn if overhealed Legendary also gained 10 agility up. He's going to be pretty tough. Well, and every time someone dies, too, it gives him... It says use his Mystic Shield and gain crit immunity 2T. I'm guessing that means two time, two crit immunities. Yeah, so, I guess so. Yeah, I'm not really sure what that means exactly. Because I know like with um, Cyborg Superman, he's crit immune, but he doesn't have like a special icon. So maybe yeah, it's just... Two, oh, two turn. He gains crit immunity for oh, two turns. Oh, for two turns. So there you go. That's yeah. what that means. Okay, that makes sense. So he's yeah, he's definitely gonna be tanky. He's gonna be tough to kill. Any any crit immune character is extremely yeah. difficult to kill. I thought he had a taunt. I'm looking for it. And I don't see. He it. does not have a taunt. It's interesting. I think he's a character with Constantine. You'll want to give him taunt. Pro yeah, I mean, it wouldn't be a bad idea. He's another one you want to overheal too. So Swamp Thing and uh, Enchantress. Yeah. He's big and beefy. <laughs> Time for in-depth character analysis with Hate. Who you got for us this week? Uh, this week we're going to talk about Jessica Cruz and Swamp Thing, of course. Um, did a lot of playing with them. And also had a, I'll have a ton of video. Almost every video you're going to see, except for... I will have a little bit of video of Deathstroke showing you that he's still a usable character. But <clears throat> I'm also going to do a lot of video with Jessica Cruz and Swamp Thing. We'll start with Jessica Cruz. Having a lot of fun with her. She's really powerful. She is basically an intelligence version of Deathstroke. She has very similar powers. She gets power from enemies being dead. and she, But she does special damage and she has AoEs, which she does not have. And she's instead of getting gazillions of strengths up, she gets shielding, which is kind of her thing. So, And her first ability, which is her shield powered blast, she does special damage to an enemy, which it does pretty good damage. It, uh, gear 11 versus gear 11. She does somewhere between 11 and 18,000 damage on average, so that's pretty good for her basic. And then if an out, the legendary upgrade is a 65% chance to strike twice if an ally is dead. So it will proc most of the time when somebody's dead on your team, and it does quite a bit of special damage, so you, you can wipe out, especially reds, you can wipe them out pretty fast. Her second ability, Construct of Will, that one is an AoE that does special damage, but if she's not debuffed, she'll also gain a 30% shield. And it is very easy to keep a ton of shields on Jessica Cruz. She's not, she does not go down easy. And her legendary upgrade, which I haven't taken this one yet, and for legendary upgrades with these characters, I'm not comfortable giving you what I would recommend just yet, but I'll just kind of tell you what I've taken so far and how I feel about it. The On the basic, I took her basic legendary upgrade. I think that's one you definitely want pretty early. Probably her first, second, or third pick, I would think. One I haven't taken yet on her AoE is that damage plus 40% per ally. I can see that being really strong, but you tend to use that early in the match, and you don't have anybody dead yet. So I haven't taken it yet for that reason. 
Her next ability, Brightest Day, which used to be a, such a horrible ability, is so good now. It applies 30% shield to all allies and plus 15% shield per dead ally. So that's one you might want to save till later in the match. Because with the legendary upgrade, it also applies 3 affinity defense up and then plus 2 affinity defense up per dead ally. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm probably going to take this one next. I've only allocated 3 of the points. And then leave Construct of Wills upgrade as my last one. That's what I'm leaning towards right now. Um, her passive is a 50% chance to purge two debuffs from herself at the beginning of every turn. This also makes her pair really well with Wonder Woman Princess, if you're not using her as a leader. And uh, the legendary upgrade, which is I think the first one I would recommend taking, is Jessica Cruz starts the battle with 65% shield. That is a ton of shield right out of the gate. That's a lot, man. And so she... That makes her extremely tanky. She can, I mean, I've had Wonder Woman DOJ, you'll see in videos, you know, slam her with her lasso and she doesn't even lose any life. Right. Um, her team, le team leader is when an ally dies, gain 30% shield. If already shielded, gain 6 intelligence up, 5 agility up, and 50% turn meter. And then gain death immunity when an ally dies is a legendary upgrade. I took that legendary upgrade early. She works pretty well as a leader, like I said, a lot like Deathstroke, where she just gains tons of shield, tons of agility, turn meter, intelligence. And intelligence is like gaining strength ups. So it right. does, and it lasts two turns, just like Deathstroke. So she's very similar in those regards. Yeah, and she works really well outside of leader, which I like too. I've used her outside of leader quite a bit. She works pretty well, so you can kind of use her as both. If you have her shards, which a lot of people probably do, since she was easy to obtain for a long time there, she does make a good energy replacement for Deathstroke if you want to run a different route and go intelligence based. And I think anti special damage characters are probably gonna probably gonna gain a little bit of steam. The a lot of teams I liked with her you'll see in the videos. She like I said, she's a fun character. The team I've been running the most is Jessica Cruz, Swamp Thing, Batman T D K and Harley Quinn. That team for some reason seems to work really well together, even though there's no real synergy. When we talk about the crazy team tops, there's some good ones too. But I I liked that team, it just seemed to work really well. And I'm sure there's a lot of other ones that that are a lot better. Um, okay. Let's get on to the main man, Swamp Thing. Yeah, I'm really excited about him. He is really good character, and judging by my defense log, because I've used him the most, he's probably a pain in the butt to fight. Yep. Anyway, Swamp Thing's a really fun character. I think he's possibly going to be a meta-changing character. He, he kind of has that early vibe. I know some people didn't seem as impressed as I have been, but I think on defense he's going to be a nightmare to deal with. Um, one team... Nightmare team, I think, that I posted on Reddit would be having Wonder Woman, DOJ lead, MJ, Power Girl, and Swamp Thing. Because so you've got to kill pretty much all three of them to get to Swamp Thing, unless you have awareness. And <laughs> Swamp Thing's just going to revive them all. I right. just, that, that would be so annoying. His first ability, Bog Spores, to tell everybody, I took everything except his number five. I think those are the best. I honestly don't know what order I would put them in just yet. That's why I'm really torn on Legendary Recommendation. But his first ability applies one man, 3% overheal to five five random allies, but also apply five critical chance up and purge five debuffs from random allies. That's all pretty good, and I wouldn't normally recommend that early, except that his passive allows you to, ca or his, one of his abilities allow you to cast that at the end, end of every turn, and it seems to happen fairly frequently. Um, his second ability, Force of Nature, it's light damage to all enemies, apply one strength down or two if an ally is mending. But he also applies an overheal across random allies. Granted, this is not a big overheal, so it's not super, you know, it's not super important. I'd probably take this one maybe fourth, but still, it's useful because you're usually you're going to open the match with it a lot, just to have that AOE so you don't have to attack a taunter and get counterattacked too. So it's still a pretty good ability. The next one is Verdant Coffin, heavy damage and apply enrage to an enemy, and then the legendary upgrade, which is very good. Always apply heal immunity and five permanent bleeds. Yeah. That is pretty powerful. It doesn't crit. I've only got it to crit a couple times, but the couple times I got it to crit, I did like 44,000 damage in one shot at an overhealed power girl. Ooh. Um, I think there might be a bug with the crit chance, potentially. I know there's some people posting about it. Um, and I want to say maybe I was on a Steppenwolf team when I saw it, but I haven't been able to replicate it since last night. But a couple times last night, it did crazy damage. So I, I do think there's a lot of potential there. When it does crit, it does high. And it does pretty good damage, even when it doesn't crit. So it's pretty good. That's one I probably would take... I would take first or second, just because it's it's useful to get those bleeds and heal immunity on a character. The last one is, is, or is 
passive, which used to be his last one, but they actually added an extra ability, is for Evergreen. This is this is what makes this kit so ridiculous. Yeah. He revives once with 40% health and apply a heavy overheal to all allies. And he has an 85% chance to also revive all allies. I've had a match where I was took in a team that didn't do so hot, and everybody died. Swamp Thing died last, revived everyone. That's that's going to be really disgusting. And and the legendary for that is apply one awareness and five mins to all allies. Now this isn't five mins per ally; it's five mins spread across all allies. So it's okay, not right. super that, ridiculous. It changes a little bit, but it's still you get a mend on every ally. I mean, or or possibly a mend on every ally. Yeah, and characters seem like they come back with about twenty percent life, twenty twenty five percent life. So it's not a huge amount of life, but it's still it's decent when they have an awareness, so they can at least take. But one awareness, hit. so they can take a hit and try to get, you know, they can get back into the game. And I think if you have some of the other characters like Constantine and other ones that apply aware or Martian Manhunter that apply awareness across the team, that could be pretty nasty. The last one is the Chlorokinesis. His passive ability is well 12% done. Chance. Well yeah. done. Hold on. I, you, I think you pronounced that correctly. I'm going to give you a, a applaud for that. His passive ability, 12% chance to use Bog Spores at the end of ally turn. Chances are tripled if Swamp Thing is overhealed. So all you got to do is get a little bit of overheal on him, which is not that hard to do, especially if you're running Enchantress lead. So that gives him a 36% chance to use it. And you'll see this I mean, happen pretty frequently. It doesn't. His Bog Spores doesn't do bad damage and all the little extras that it does, applying the critical chance up and the purging debuffs from allies. So it's super useful. Um, the upgrade, which you know, now I'm thinking about it, I might have wanted to take. Also apply one permanent min to random teammate. That actually is starting to sound a little better now that I'm looking at some of this. Maybe uh, I'd leave a, off. A permanent min on a random ally. Yeah, that's that could get yeah. really annoying. It makes I don't you know which one I drop. <laughs> I think easy solution here, go L5. Yeah. He might be worth it, too. It seems like it, yeah. And you've obviously got to play with him a little bit, and we'll, we'll get into him a little more with our crazy team comp section with Ogre. Yeah, he's a fun character. I mean, I, I played him a whole heck of a lot last night. I mean, there's a lot of matches where it feels like he did nothing. So you'll be like, well, I could have used someone else and maybe completed the match faster. But if you're if you're concerned at all about defensive wins, he does pretty well. My defensive blocks work working pretty good since I started using him. I think for long matches, your 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 winning chance is high because you're gonna revive everybody. Granted, you're not gonna get max points because you know somebody's gonna have to die for that to work. But yeah, interesting character. I, I definitely like the concept. It's neat. Crazy team comps with Ogre Barbarian. All right, we'd like to welcome Ogre back for another crazy team comps with Ogre Barbarian. Uh, you made some interesting team compositions around Swamp Thing and Jessica Cruz for Hate to check out. What's the first team you got for us? The first one was Enchantress, Bane, Poison Ivy, and Swamp Thing. I really like this team. The only challenge I had with it was the um, every now and again Enchantress would just get nuked down right at the beginning because I didn't have a taunter. So I ended up swapping out Poison Ivy for either Power Girl or MJ, depending on the comp, and it works so well. Um, I know you made some videos on this ogre that worked really well. Mind, mind talking to us about it a little bit? Yeah, so I, I'm i still going through the Shazam Hero Challenge, and I figured it was a good way to you know test them out because I don't have everybody quite gear 11 or anything, so I didn't want to take them into PvP. Um, but the interaction between Swamp Things, Bog Spores, and Enchantress... And then Bane wanting to be overhealed, getting plenty of overheal from these guys. It's just, it is kind of obnoxious how many bonus attacks it procked. Yeah, I was giggling through my entire team. video. It, it, yeah, that team worked even better than I expected. I knew it would be good when first looking at it. Um, but if you're watching the YouTube version of this, you'll see that team in action. The Poison Ivy, Enchantress managed to hang on early and then she ended up going down. But it's still, Bane was powered up, so it didn't matter. Um, but when I put in a taunting character to give Enchantress some cover, it got disgustingly good. And the bad part is, is that if you, I think if you're facing it in PvP, um, judging my, my, by my defense log with Swamp Thing on teams, is you may be able to kill a few of them. You finally, if you take down Swamp Thing, the other two get revived. And then if you take down Bane early, he gets revived by Swamp Thing. So this, this whole revive mechanic with Swamp Thing I think had a lot to do with the uh, death stroke changes because it is disgusting. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Swamp Thing is huge for why death stroke got changed. Um, that and because Jessica Cruz got her update, 
and then Constantine and Martian Manhunter, like everybody seems to care about deaths right now. So it's definitely something that they wanted to have everybody on par at the same time, I think. Well, and the, the people that are saying Red Hood is worthless and they wasted their gems. Um, that's, the only, <laughs> that's the only team. Swamp Thing is a reason to have Red Hood because he, when Swamp Thing is attacked by Red Hood, yeah, that's the only that's the only team I have a hard time with is because Red Hood keeps the revive mechanic from happening. Yeah, Red and Hood and, and Dr. Fate, are, their stock is going up, if you ask me. I agree. Okay. Uh, looks like you had another team here with Medfill as the lead. <laughs> yeah, there's Medfill, Solomon Grundy, Bane, and Swamp Thing. Um, I wasn't able to test this because my Medfill is not completely geared out yet. I was working on him, and then with the whole having to slow down gearing, he fell into that list. But that team does <laughs> another one that I think would be a lot of fun. Yeah, and it's you know it's the same concept. Yeah, like, very similar dynamic. Swamp Thing just kind of heals everybody up. Medfill's there to, to give shields and overheals to, or uh, not overheals, but uh, turn meter to these guys, you know, to speed them up a little bit because they're not the fastest group of guys. And then Grundy being able to revive on his own. If you do manage to take him down and then you kill Swamp Thing, he has a chance to come back again. Like, it's just, I, I love the synergy between Swamp Thing and some of these other characters. His new kit is bonkers. Yeah, the next one you have, and I didn't get to test this either because I don't have Lex Luthor Assault War suit, is Lex Luthor, Penguin, Jessica Cruz, and Swamp Thing. I could see that team being really annoying to face. Yeah, that was the idea with that one. It was just, you know, be as absolutely tanky as possible. Yeah. And since they introduced the new mechanic for uh, affinity defense with Jessica Cruz's kit, you now have the affinity resistance on Penguin, the affinity defense on Jessica Cruz, and then Swamp Thing's handing out men's and overheels like candy, and Lex is handing out shields, Jessica's handing out shields, Penguin's handing out shields. Like, if you can get through all of that and manage to kill these guys, and then Swamp Thing has a chance to revive them all, like, yeah, I just it feels like it's really annoying. I can see PvP slowing way down. Yeah, I yeah. think it definitely is gonna with this. I mean, just playing these teams you can just feel it as the as people gear these characters up um the next one i actually did test at length and <laughs> i had so much fun with this team it's jessica cruz penguin joker and swamp thing and having penguin die joker die cast their abilities and then get revived to do it all over again it's just it's a fun team yeah and that was the idea is that those guys have death triggers that allow them to do bonus attacks and for pretty decent damage on joker because of that true damage and the bleeds so like it can just wear you down and then you kill swamp thing and they all come back and then it's just like oh my god i gotta do it again <laughs> if you don't have a healer on your team you're probably going down and penguin um i think penguin's gonna make a little bit of a comeback with these <clears throat> with these teams he, he he just he's gonna make life frustrating sure. oh yeah definitely like i was saying between penguin and just the cruise you have affinity resistance and affinity defense now so, I haven't taken that point in Jessica Cruz yet. I was torn between her AOE extra damage when somebody's dead or that one. I'm leaning towards the affinity because of that. Because um, you yeah, don't really just, seem to use her AOE when people are dead as often. So Well, it's a new buff. I, I have to personally like it, obviously, just for that. Yeah. <laughs> you know. The, the next team I played a lot of, I love this next team. Um, and it's it holds up well. You'll see a fair amount of gameplay of it on the YouTube version. Is Jessica Cruz, Harley Quinn, Raven, and Doctor Fate. That that team synergizes extremely well. Yeah, that is the all intelligence team. Yeah, they are very well happy to to just nuke everything with their intelligence. Yeah, a lot of special damage, a lot of intelligence up, and intelligence. A lot down. of survivability. I would is what I was going for too. Yeah, I mean, because what I would do is if Jessica Cruz or Doctor Fate start to get a little bit low. Just cast Jessica Cruz's shields, which are pretty significant now. Doctor Fate's shields, and then, it, and then Harley just sits there and nukes away like she always does. Yeah. And then the last one that seems like it's a similar team: Jessica Cruz, Harley Quinn, Zatanna, and Doctor Fate. I could see this working pretty well. I don't have Zatanna geared out yet either. Jeez. Right, and that was originally I I threw that one together because that was the one that I wanted to use because Zatanna on her base attack will apply the end downs. Raven, I subbed in because I knew you didn't have Zatanna um, as a pseudo sub. She does basically the same thing, except her purges can't miss on the evasion. And then her intelligence down is only tied to her third skill, not her basic. So I like I like Raven better against MJ teams. 
because she can take her out. Um, oh, yeah. But was, Cortana was better against Power Girl. Right, yeah. So it really just depends on who you're facing as to which one of those two is better. But they both kind of fill the same role. Yeah, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun with these two new characters. They're definitely different. Yeah, just reworks. Oh, they, yeah. Yeah, they're not well. even the new ones yet. Right? So These are new. just reworks, but they do feel like new characters. I agree. Um, oh, they, they're completely different. So, real quick, Ogre, while we've got you on, we wanted to kind of get your reaction and feedback on the, the changes to Deathstroke and Lobo. We talked about it earlier in the show, but there's been quite a bit of community outcry in the Deathstroke Lobo. Mm-hmm. It, doesn't, it doesn't surprise me that, you know, that's the case. Uh there was obviously a good chunk of the community that was using, you know, Lobo and Destro constantly. That's why we've been dealing with it for the last, what, four months or so. Um, I never went that route. (laughs) It feels it might be five or six now. Who knows? It's been a long time. You know, it's been a long time. And it definitely, uh, again, the changes weren't because of the outcry. So don't blame anybody on that, I don't think. Like, there's no reason to blame, oh, you whiters and crybabies got me, my favorite character nerfed, and that's not, it's not what it is. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with Swamp Thing becoming what he has become. And the other characters, you know, Jessica Cruz and Constantine and Marshmallow, like, what they offer, the same, like, the same strategy. Like, it, it would have just been really dumb if Deathstroke and Lobo were still the same, and then those characters all get introduced at the same time. Like, if you thought PvP was bad during Deathstroke Lobo, I can't even think of what it would be like with all the rest of the characters they're just introducing. Sure. So, do you think it had some uh, something to do with possible future content as well? Just the fact that you yeah, I think I think there. there is a strong possibility that future content also would be affected by it. You know, I mean, obviously they said when I went and visited, the devs have stuff planned out for a long time yet. So, I mean, they kind of know what's coming on. So. Now, let me ask you another question with that. Um, With Deathstroke and Lobo changes, with PvP, I know you didn't really use them a whole lot, but are you seeing any difference in how you perform in PvP in regards to it, or it doesn't have any bearing? It's only been a couple of days. I mean, you can't even... It's not even been a couple of days. It's just literally been a few hours, actually. Uh, So it's hard to say. Like, my boards, I haven't seen a whole ton of Deathstrokes, but whether or not that's because of the change or whether or not that's because of just me being lucky and not seeing them, I don't know yet. It's hard to say. All right, we'd just like to mention real quick that we just recently dropped a patron-only episode that was over two hours long of bonus material. Interview content with Ogre's visit to DC Legend Studios, Fanatic Jalapeno, and a few other things that didn't make it into the show. Also, some banter between me and Slow Beast. If you like the show, consider becoming a patron and get a special show each month, our special Q&A episode. It's only a dollar to have access to this. Check it out at patreon.com. We are our legends. Thanks for listening. <laughs> You're not going to say anything? We are legends.